My name is Chris Harris. I live in South Florida. I'm 65 years old and retired in the last year because of the pandemic. Anyway, I'm going to talk about a bounce back moment in my life. And the biggest one is the one I'm going to talk about because we all have bounce backs throughout our lives. But there was a big one for me and it involved drugs and alcohol. Uh, I started drinking when I was 13 years old and wasn't uh, uh, too shocking to me because a lot of my friends were drinking. So it wasn't regular at that time. But by the time I was in high school, uh, even during the week, not just weekends, we would ride around and drink beer. Started working at 21 and um, continued drinking. So that was just life. Drink after work, drink on the weekends. I thought this was social drinking but it was more drinking than I guess the average person. But anyway, as this went on, um, the 1980s rolled around, cocaine came into my life. And from 1979 to 1989, I was a daily user of alcohol and cocaine. Um, <clears throat> the cocaine graduated to crack cocaine. Uh, crack cocaine uh, had me at one in one episode have a seizure. I'd have the emergency uh, paramedics come by and check on me. And without rehab, that was the end of my cocaine experiment. Only 10 years to figure it out. But it scared me and it didn't uh, have <clears throat> the same effects as it used to. It, it made me feel like things were crawling on me. So there was no pleasure in the cocaine. So then the alcohol increased because that's all I had left. And um, so this continued until I was nearly 40. Then I met my current wife, um, kind of got my act together so that the relationship would stay intact. We got married, things were going fine. We had one daughter and then we had a second daughter. And all my life, I thought, you know, I'm too much of a screw up to have children. I would be too irresponsible. But when the first child came along, I realized that this was my calling in life. So <clears throat> my wife was continuing her education to advance in her career. And uh, so I was the main caretaker of my two little daughters. So we had all the mommy and me classes, me being the mommy. We did everything together and I took care of most of the daily child rearing uh, dinner at night, homework at night, uniforms ready for the next day, lunches made, draw the cute pictures on their lunch bags that they told me later was embarrassing at school. But anyway, so this was my life, but my drinking continued. And I thought, what a great father I'm turning out to be. My kids love me. I feel like I'm doing a great job. But every night I was drinking, got everything done. So I was functional, but it, it, it was fooling me as far as like how responsible I was. Well, <clears throat> as they got a little older, the drinking got um, heavier and it was becoming a problem for me at work. It was affecting the marriage. Uh, actually, we separated, the marriage separated, uh, my wife and I for like a little more than a year. So now the thought of being a good father, alcohol had pushed me out the door and I was seeing them on weekends only. Well, I went to rehab and cleaned up my act and stopped drinking and um, listened to the rehab people that told us that alcohol is um, progressive, that if you stop drinking, it's great. But if you have one drink, it doesn't start over. You will be where you were when you stopped at your worst, and then you will pick up right there and be right where you were when you stopped. And I, I listened and I, I thought they were probably right. But after a year, I thought, you know, I could probably drink on weekends and something happened and I had a drink one night and it very quickly affected me. And I said, whoa, 
but I didn't have another drink. But for the next two weeks, just like I was told in rehab, my brain was working me. It was telling me, see, Chris, you haven't had a drink in two, two days. You haven't had a drink in four days. Chris, you haven't had a drink in a week. But every day, that's what my brain was telling me. You can do it. You haven't had a drink. But I was one thinking about how I hadn't had a drink every single day. Well, after two weeks, I started drinking and right away was very, very intoxicated every time I drank. And I was trying to hide it at home. We, my wife and I had gotten back together and I wasn't fooling anyone. Well, I said to myself, I'm going to call in sick tomorrow and drink for the last time. What a mistake. So I called in sick the next day. Everybody went to work, school. I had a couple of drinks, but I had been drunk the night before and it all still in my system kicked in and I took a nap. And then when it was time to pick up my children from school, not realizing I was still drunk, I had another drink and got in the car to get them. Uh, picked them up from school, and most of this was a blackout, so you can imagine the good father and how uh, irresponsibly picking up two children and gratefully, my daughters being eight and ten, and being very intelligent, knew right away that daddy wasn't right. So I pull out of the school parking lot, clip somebody's car, and my daughter said, Dad, Please don't drive, pull into the Publix parking lot, which is a uh, supermarket, food supermarket. So I pulled in for some unknown reason, not knowing, you know, I don't remember most of it, but I do remember seeing my youngest daughter's face and she's crying and asking me, Daddy, please don't drive. Uh, thankfully, a lady came by, took my keys and um, had my daughters call my wife on the cell phone. And when the someone else called the police, uh, the police showed up, but I was, when they helped me out of the car, I couldn't stand up. So I got to go to the hospital instead of being arrested. And um, uh, long story short, blood alcohol level was very, very high. Children in the car, endangering children, uh, an open container that I didn't realize was in the car. And um, so um, I was in a little bit of trouble. Uh, in front of the judge, very embarrassing to be told that uh, the lawyer telling him, yes, he has prior arrests from my cocaine years. So the bail went very high, um, bailed out, but I was also told by the judge after being so reckless with my children, he had them put a ankle bracelet on me that can detect through your pores if you drink alcohol, it will come through your pores and set off an alarm, and then they will come and get you and take you away from your children for probably until you can fix that. Anyway, so I knew it was serious. Uh, I had many court ordered programs that I had to go through, and I knew I had to make my children understand that um, Daddy was not going to endanger them ever again. So this was the eye-opening moment that I should have had years before, but when the most precious two little things in my life were put at risk where I could have killed, injured them or myself or any random person on the street, <clears throat> I knew that you know I needed to get this right. It was much easier after this to get it right because I knew that I couldn't drink. I knew everything they had told me in rehab was true, that if I had one drink, this is where I would be. Um, when I went to one of the programs, the guy heard me introduce myself when I walked in. He was so excited to meet me because he told me my blood alcohol was 0 0.033 or point whatever, however, 0. Point, well, it was 0 0.33. He goes, do you know what blood alcohol is, the number is when you die. I don't know, it's 0 .04, 0 .040. So he says, you're very close to dying. I, I expect to hear a lot from you and hear from me. So anyway, so I opened up and 
you know, accepted the fact that, yeah, I'm an alcoholic, a drug addict, have been all my life. I needed to get this right for my children. So every assignment I was given, every program um, uh, that I was going through, I involved both my daughters. I wanted them to know that daddy knew what he did. Daddy was not a bad person. Dad was sick. Dad had a disease called alcoholism, but that doesn't mean that dad can't get cured. That dad can work at it for the rest of his life and dad can stay sober and dad can be there for them and dad can never endanger them through alcohol and drugs ever again. So they listened and they asked questions and they heard all about their father and as they got older they also found out about a couple of times he had been arrested for drug possession in the 1980s and that even though daddy was a very good person daddy could do things that were illegal as long as he was using drugs or alcohol so um it has been 13 years now since i had a drink or done, done any drugs I, that makes me happy but it also makes me happy that um I'm still alive to share their lives and to have two of my best friends as my daughters. Um, and that they know that they were more important to me than, than alcohol. Um, it took a very scary, near tragic event for me to get over the hump, but I did. And that is my bounce back moment. Um, anyone that's struggling with drugs or alcohol out there, you can do it because um, I really never thought that I had to or I would, but it's either, and, and, and I'll tell you, my life is richer without the alcohol. I do not miss the alcohol. You can do it. It's just that um, it, it's, it's a little bit, you have to put a little bit of the work in, okay? And that's, so thank you very much for listening.